Hello and welcome to Plumbing Solutions Educational Series. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about the plumbing system as a whole. Now, a lot of people don't realize that your plumbing system, it's actually two different systems. One of them is a pressurized system for potable water, which is your drinking water, your bathing water, stuff like that. And it's distributed throughout your house through a pressurized system to the individual fixtures. Uh, the second half of this system is what we call your DWV which stands for drain waste vent. And this is a gravity system. The water flows downhill, so everything is pitched to direct that flow down and out of your house. Uh, it's also vented. It has to be vented. Your plumbing system has to breathe, or toilets gurgle, bathtubs don't drain right, and you might suck a P-trap dry and then have some odor coming into your house. So it has to breathe. Um, and that's the two basic sides of your plumbing system. Now, that potable water, it's got to start somewhere. So most of us are on a city water system or county or some type of joint municipal, and that water is going to come to you through a water meter out in the yard. Uh, the other types are you could be on a well if you live kind of out in the rural area, and that basically pumps the water straight up out of the ground, <laughs> kind of like the old well with the bucket and stuff. Uh, the other system I can think of, you could pump your water straight out of a reservoir such as a lake or a river, uh, but then you'd have to have some kind of treatment system inside your house to purify that water to where it is considered potable. Um, and with all of these, it goes from that source, it travels underground, and then into your residence. So let's see where it goes next. Once your water is brought into your house, the first thing you're going to hit is some type of valve. It could be out in the yard. Uh, we like to put them in the garage. Uh, it looks similar to this, a ball valve, which you can be turned on or off. Um, a lot of times we're going to have a pressure regulating valve or a pressure reducing valve right here uh, with this system. Now, of course, I put gauges on here so I can kind of tell what's going on with the pressure. Let's see where we go next. Now up to this point, our water's been cold. It's been about 60 to 65 degrees coming straight out of the ground uh, to that valve that might be in your garage or out in the dirt. Uh, and it's pretty much gonna go straight to your water heater. Uh, we like to use the tankless water heaters. That's pretty much what we see nowadays in, in the new construction field. Uh, but if you don't have gas in your neighborhood, you might still have uh, the old conventional big tank electric style heater, but most of the time we use the tanklesses and they work really well for, for us. From this point, our potable water pressurized system is going to split into two sides. You're going to have your cold water supply and you're going to have your hot water supply. Well, the next place you're going to find yourself is at a fixture, such as this bathtub or a sink, a kitchen sink, a lavatory, uh, or shower, uh, or, or anything like a washing machine, anything that uses water. Uh, now, this is where the system breaks. This is where it splits. From this spout, we have our potable, clean drinking water coming into our tub. And once it's been used, we don't want it back. <laughs> we want it to leave our house as soon as it possibly can. And that's when it goes into the drain line. But a lot of people don't really see this or know about it, but this, this is where it breaks. There's actually an air gap here because there's an overflow drain. At no point should the water be able to come up above this rim elevation to touch that spout. That is your break. We don't want a cross connection or anything that could contaminate our water. Pretty much all of your fixtures kind of work off of this system where there's that air gap break so that your dirty water and your clean water never touch each other. Now we got something really important to talk about. This little device here, little elbow looking thing, is what we call a P-trap. We call it that because of the way it's shaped, not because of what's in it. Uh, this holds water, which prevents sewer gas from coming up this sewer line and going back up into that tub, that shower, um, a lot of them are underneath, but like a toilet traps itself, 
uh, and a sink or a lavatory, its little trap is going to be in the cabinet, right underneath the sink, and it's going to be above this floor. But P-traps are a big thing, uh, and it's why we have to vent, because if we don't vent, this pressure could suck this trap dry, and then we've got that stinky stuff going upstairs. Now the next place you're going to find yourself is, well, underneath, down here with the waste lines. Uh, this is where all your sewer water is going to run, down these pipes, which is a gravity system. There's no pumps here. It all just gradually rolls downhill, ties into a main trunk, and then we head on out of the house. Now this is parts of your sewer system that you don't see because a lot of times this is going to be buried out in the yard. Uh, and it'll be completely under the dirt. You might see this white cap sticking up, uh, but this device here is gonna be under the dirt, and this is what we call a backwater valve. Uh, and there's a flapper in here, it's like a little trap door, that only lets water go one way. If the main line were ever to back up, it's gonna slam against this door, and it's not gonna let it go back into your house. This is a pretty neat thing. Um, most places do require this by code, but there's a few out there that don't, but we make it a habit. Uh, and then, like I said, you'd have your clean out poking up. A lot of y'all are probably familiar with these. They'd be out in your yard, and if you ever had a backup or something like that, you could uh, run a sewer machine or a hand snake of some kind, or you can run your inspection camera down there and see what's going on. You might have some roots or something like that. But that's pretty much it. From here, we're going to roll on out to the city's tap and we're going to forget about that water because it's not our problem anymore. Well, thanks guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I didn't move too fast. Uh, we're going to cover some of this stuff more in depth later on, but thanks a lot.